Hi everyone, this is Sanjana from Mockad, and today I'm continuing the series where we are talking about our students and asking them to share their experience of how their CAT prep and their interview experience went. Now, when it comes to MBA aspirants, one common issue which many of you would be facing is that you know your work is really hectic, and how do you balance your prep? So, to help you with that, today I have Vignesh out here. Vignesh has had pretty hectic, pretty interesting, but pretty hectic work, and he's managed to balance that with his CAT and his interview prep and crack IM Code Code, which was his best call. So, hi Vignesh, thanks for joining us, and I'm sure that you'll end up inspiring a lot of people so why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself firstly hello ma'am uh, and uh, hello to all the students who have been who are listening to this video i would like to mention about uh, myself so i hail from city of hyderabad and where i've done my 10th and best two from and then i went on to do my graduation from triple it chennai in the field of computer science post that i have prepared for upsc for two years and unfortunately i couldn't get through then i've decided then i have to make a move and then I've joined an international company where I've been working, especially in trade consulting, trade education, and trade missions. My work is a very varied and different in the niche sector mm -hmm. where I get to interact with a couple of very varied, varied companies from different sectors, understand their requirements, help them with the international market access. Mm -hmm. I've also got an opportunity to deal with multiple trade missions to Thailand. I've also been part to World Economic Forum Davos this year. So it is very uh, different work experience that I had, mm -hmm. which has helped me understand different facets of entrepreneurship and why I have to do an MBA. Mm -hmm. uh, given the fact that, uh, as mentioned by you, ma'am, uh, my work demanded a lot of time from me. I have worked six days a week for close to 14 hours a day, 16 hours a day. But uh, given that, given the fact that I've been in, I've been wanting to get into a good B school, mm -hmm. I've made sure that I pull out some time in between to give my CAT preparation. Mm -hmm. And that is how I ended up getting calls from IIM Kohigod, Indoor, IIT Bombay, and IIM CAP and other B schools, I have good B schools. And fortunately, I could get, I've, I've converted all the calls that I've got be it Kohigod, Indoor, all other caps. And uh, I would like to thank the team of Mocket, especially Vigne Sir and Sanjana ma'am, because they have been the pillars of support throughout the journey of my preparation, right from entering into uh, joining the, from the very first day. Also, to the last day of my interview, they have been uh, for the support, and I could reach out to them for any question, any query, any day of the week. So that is something about myself. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah. I think that's exactly the part that I was talking about where your work was really hectic. So six days a week, about, you know, 14, 15 hours and then travel on top of that and obviously a lot of prep. So, uh, so how, what was running in your mind, you know, when you decided that, yes, you're going to balance work with cat prep and how did you manage it? Tell me a little bit more. Sure, ma'am. So initially, I've I've started my uh, preparation in somewhere mid June. So for all the students who are now thinking of preparing for 2024 CAT, I think don't feel left out. This is the right time to start your preparation. And given that you have right mentoring uh, from uh, the mock CAT, or for that matter, if even for people, students who are preparing on self, it is the right time for you to start preparing for 2024 CAT. Mm. I've started my preparation in June 2023. Mm. And for uh, six months, uh, it was very difficult. I had a lot of inhibitions in me. Mm. I was confused, perplexed how the preparation has to go given my work conditions. What I have done is I've understood the strengths, what where I can do well and where I'll have to concentrate on. Mm -hmm. So for all the working students all, or for all the working aspirants, I would like to tell you that initially try to give a mock try to attempt writing a previous year CAD paper, mm -hmm. understand where you're doing well, because you might be an engineer, very good at quant, DLR, but lacking in VRC. Or if you're a non-engineer, being very good in VRC, but lacking in quant and DLR. So for my case, thanks to UPC preparation, I've, gone, I've had had the habit of reading newspapers. I was very good in VRC. Mm -hmm. I was consistently getting good marks in VRC. But DLR and quant are the areas where I was not doing good. So I specifically made sure that as soon as I return from my work, 8.30, 9 o'clock in the evenings, I made sure that I listened to the live classes sometimes. Post that, I've also completed the recorded sessions. For me, especially in the quant, the arithmetic, algebra, geometry, I made sure that I completed the recorded sessions, went back and solved the CAT previous questions first. Because given the paucity of time, I didn't have to give a lot of specific sectional mocks, but I went back and wrote the previous years of uh, questions, especially in the subject that I've completed. So I've put a weekly target that this week I would complete arithmetic, this week I would uh, complete geometry. But here and there, we will not be able to complete given the working conditions, but yeah. you shouldn't be uh, carried away with that. You will have to make sure that you complete much of a syllabus. You just pick also, it up the I next week or, you know, whenever you can, yeah. 
exactly ma'am one week we might be having a lot of work and we might not end up studying anything mm -hmm. but there would be a week where we'll have a lot of leisure time mm -hmm. uh, getting a festival or so there's long weekend mm -hmm. where we can cover up the previous right. weeks so that is something i would like to tell about mm -hmm. and also for uh, i would like i would like to also mention about there might be a lot of upsc aspirants who might be listening to this mm -hmm. video i would like to give them a suggestion that mba is something very similar to the upsc preparation that we had because we'll have we'll have not have to be specialist in one subject it have we'll have to have we will have to be a generalist be it vrc rcs odd nouns para jumbles to quant where we'll have to have arithmetic geometry algebra to dlr so we'll have to have quite fair amount of knowledge in all these things so when you come here you will have to make sure that what are your strengths and what are the weaknesses mm -hmm. focus on the weaknesses and make sure that the strengths that you continue and you improve the scores gradually for me initially my scores were somewhere close to around hanging around 35 40 but i ended up increasing my marks by 2x so uh, it helped me especially focus on quant and dlr and ended up getting good marks in both the sections mm -hmm. great yeah lot of good insights so for all of you guys who are you know working first off so yeah that's something which i would also recommend take a mock understand your strengths and weaknesses and i mean as vignesh did right he ta targeted his strength and make sure he got a very high score there which was in verbal and then also targeted the weaknesses simultaneously which were on the quant and the dlr front and you know made sure that you know you get good marks and like you said you pretty much ended up doubling your score and for a lot of you all who are hearing it might surprise you might be thinking that you know he's going from 30 40 marks to 80 odd marks so is that even enough though in cat right so 75 to 83 odd marks out of 198 marks is actually 99 percentile so that's again something to remember and uh, you are not targeting something like a 180 190 marks so don't even stress about that right so you need to tackle this exam in a slightly different way you need to go for you know the easy questions you need to sort of you know go for your strengths uh, but yeah but great so take a pass paper uh, you know whatever time you have yes it's going to be difficult but whatever time you have push through and you know concepts past questions and i think you took uh, quite a few mocks and uh, quizzes as well right so how did that part go and uh, probably tell us a little bit about the dlr bit as well how do you prepare for that because that's again something uh, which is a little bit newer right for almost everybody i mean you're an engineer so am i so we've had a bit of that in you know aptitude exams for placements but the cat dlr is of course something which is very different and typically people end up doing just you know one or two cases and i would say about 75 80% people might not even crack one case right typically if you get one case right we end up getting somewhere in that 75 to 85 percentile automatically so how did you prepare for that and uh, just tell us about the mocks also sure ma'am especially with the dlr initially i was that is that was one section that i was frightened of because we, it is very new section to everyone be it for the okay. engineers or the non engineers we 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 might be doing aptitude but dlr is a different ball game given the exam conditions it is difficult to structure our thought process and end up solving at least one case in the examination so uh, initially i was not able to solve even a case uh, even one case uh, while i have started my preparation but what i have done ma'am religiously every day what i have made sure is i solve the daily quiz of the dlr i have missed quant i have missed a vrc but i have not missed dlr mm -hmm. what i have done even if i missed one day i ended up going back next day and solving the yesterday's mm -hmm. uh, date quiz of dlr mm -hmm. i would highly recommend that take at least 30 minutes out of your time on a daily schedule and see that you solve at least a case daily so this amounts to closing solving up to 100 cases by the time you write your cat in november mm -hmm. you make sure that you at least solve 100 to 150 cases given that you daily solve one case a day so this will give you exposure to different cases and how you have to solve it so what i have done is i have solved the f case if i end up not getting the thing i went back and listened to the solution that was available on the mm -hmm. website so i was able to structure my thought process so when i when i got a case similar to that after 30 or 40 days then i have observed that i was able to solve that question so this helped me and ended up me solving the uh, couple uh, solving cases in my uh, final cat exam and from 0 to i ended up scoring somewhere close to 20 marks in my dlr in the final examination so that i uh, give complete uh, credits to the daily quizzes that i've solved on the mockat website and also to the solutions that i had right so great yeah and in fact uh, for those of you who are watching in case if you haven't uh, you know subscribe to any pack on mockat the daily quizzes are still free so you will always have you know today's and yesterday's quiz so you can also just you know come down and just take that and you know hopefully that helps uh, 
so tell me a little about how you took mocks what was your thought process how did you start and you know we were also speaking about verbal right so that was your strength because for upsc of course you've read a lot of varied genres so how were the cat rcs how were they different uh, how did you tackle the non rcs what did you do and how did you sort of like you know i mean we've spoken about this of course making sure that you get as high a score in verbal so that your overall score is really high even if you know dilr and quant are somewhat around you know an average score so just tell us a little bit about that sure so vrc has always uh, been my strength especially focusing on rcs but the other uh, things i was not being able to do much but verbal ability but rc was always my strength so what i have done is i have initially given couple of sectional mocks in the vrc section mm -hmm. what i have understood i was doing relatively well in rcs but i was not doing much in verbal ability okay. that was that is what i have understood and i was hanging around somewhere close to 20 to 25 marks initial mocks mm -hmm. so i have to take it down to close to more than 40 in order to end up getting in the 99% which is what time. did also yeah yes ma'am so what i have done is uh, honestly the rcs have not focused much on but i would like to mention here to all the viewers who are uh, read, uh, who are watching this video i would highly recommend even if you have not subscribed to the package of mockat please uh, subscribe to the telegram channel of mockat where uh, where sanjana ma'am would be posting the daily a uh, read of rc on a daily basis please go through please read that rc please understand that rc so if you are a student of rc you get the liberty of interacting with sanjana ma'am and getting the feedback of povs on a daily basis i have had a couple of friends who ended up getting from single digit to close to th more than 35 marks in rcs in 6 months only because of the daily povs feedback that they have got from sanjana ma'am mm -hmm. i feel that povs actually play a very important and key role in order to understand where you are lacking in rcs and how you have to develop that mm -hmm. and for students who are freshly graduating from colleges please don't vaguely read the newspapers or for the articles for the sake of reading but understand what you will have to comprehend from the reading comprehension and that is where this pov would help you structure your thought process mm -hmm. and coming back to verbal ability ma'am i think i have completed all the videos para jumbled odd one out sequencing everything on the mockad website i have practiced previous year questions mm -hmm. i have first immediately after completing the whole class i went back attempted the attempted the previous year questions tested whether i was able to do it if not then again came back and revisited the video okay. segment so the the recorded sessions have actually helped me uh, uh crack the verbal ability and i could uh, tell that from 20 25 marks in the initial phases to end up getting 99 percentile in vrc in the final cat 2023 examination i think verbal ability is where i have improved the most of the my marks mm -hmm. and which is how it is right so sometimes as you know mba aspirants what we end up doing is we start either thinking that okay you know uh, quant is you know something which i know because i've studied it in school and this typically happens to us engineers right and uh, we'll think okay let's focus on the others or i i've also had a lot of students come up and say that hey i'm pretty good in english so i think that is a part where i'll score but one is you know the cat exam of course is very different from what we've had in school and you know in school for example rcs i think we'll have a lot of direct questions or even in the you know on the quant front we'll we'll have step marks we'll have to Write a certain way to get the full marks, and a lot of people can finish the paper. Here, there's no scope of finishing the paper when it. I mean, at least not the entire CAT paper. So yeah, so that um, focusing on your strong, your strengths, and making sure that you know you get a really high score. So me, for example, over the last couple of years, I, there are so many quant formulae which I've forgotten. I'm not practicing quant in DILR, right? But again, because my verbal score uh, is in the 50s, so that really helps me to sort of get a 99 plus. So that's definitely something which is there, and that's something which you leverage pretty well. And these are exactly the things I think which will be really useful. useful for uh, you know working aspirants where since you have to make the best use of whatever time you have yeah you make sure you know the concepts you make sure that you know your past year questions again are a great way in fact we have quite a few solved on youtube itself uh, but yeah but taking up the past year questions taking up mocks and analyzing them and improving that definitely is the way forward and uh, so of course you know you ended up cracking cat and you know getting calls from i am code code indore cat pretty much so many iims iits bunch of b schools right so how do you prepare for that and of course i remember there were some doubts which you know some fears which we had discussed two years gap because of upsc and you know how to justify that how to justify then you know the switch from upsc to mba and the entire preparation because as a result of that you ended up cracking every interview call that you had right so just tell me how you prepared for it sure ma'am uh, i would like to mention here to all the students or for all the mba aspirants who are listening to this video that interview is a very important part of the journey of getting onto good b school because getting a good pa a good percentile in cat itself doesn't guarantee you that you get into the top b school but it is also the interview that will end up landing you in a good b school mm -hmm. for my part i feel that i have been rewarded with a good b school i am going good is only because of my good uh, uh, interview preparation that i have had post my cat percentile mm -hmm. now coming back to 
my preparation in the interview, ma'am, I think the multiple mocks that I had with the IM alumni, which thanks to Mockad, which helped me had these mock interviews that I had, that have actually helped me understand that where I'm standing at, where I'm having the gaps, and where I have to fill out to. The biggest uh, inhibition or biggest confusion that I had is about the two years of UPSC gap that I had, and what how I have to justify it. So that is where I think I have been very honest. I've told that two years I have prepared for UPSC, but I couldn't get through the examination. And that is where even the interview panelists will appreciate that point, of, that point, and you'll have to be very honest with that. But you'll have to also make sure that you convince the interview panelists and why you have switching from UPSC to MBA again. That would be most important case. So for me, my work experience played a key role there because I have had a two years of fair amount of work experience where I've got to interview with more than hundreds of entrepreneurs on a day-to-day -day basis. I've told why I want to get into a B-school and how my interaction with those entrepreneurs has helped me understand about management, entrepreneurship and stuff. So that is that was the most important part. And for most of the uh, students who are thinking that for interview, it is the current affairs that you'll have to uh, read about if you're, you'll have to read about your academics. So there are a lot of confusions surrounding around it. I would like to mention that, yes, you have to have fair amount of understanding about the current affairs. I do advise everyone to start reading newspapers right from now it will help you in the rcs please start reading a newspaper of your choice on a daily basis but even if you're not getting for the working aspirants if you're not able to end up uh, reading newspaper on a daily basis but at least make sure that you read newspapers post the uh, your cat uh, examination because it will help you in your interviews there are a couple of current affairs questions that you will end up getting in the interview where you should be knowing a fair amount of what is happening around the world. Absolutely. For me, since that I've prepared for UPSC, I was able to tackle it. But for the students who are very graduating from the college or also working in different fields, I would re highly recommend reading a newspaper for them. In fact, I think this is something which you've not had to use. So on the site, we have five curated news articles which we put up every day. So uh, what I recommend here, and you know, because what you said is right. So for somebody who's not read news at all, it'll be difficult to just start and figure out because, you know, you're going through a newspaper, you're not sure which one to read, what type of news to read and things like that. So what we do is we just curate it. And I always recommend to everybody that, you know, just look at it on a daily basis, pick one whichever one you feel is interesting or maybe is you know relevant to whatever you know you have studied or whatever work you are doing just start with that and slowly build up the habit but absolutely moment cat is done that's something which definitely should be taken up because yes of course they will be uh, i mean i think majority of interviews they will be asking something which is you know at least relevant to you because they'd expect you to keep me be informed so I would like to mention one incident that I had with one of my interviews. I would like not like to mention the name of the of the college, but for the one interview that I had, I had a question. So for I have made sure that before the interview, the last twenty five day questions that on the Mockad website, I made sure that uh, with the interaction that I had with Vigni sir, because we have the most important topics that are going. Even if I read newspaper, we may not understand that which is relevant, which we'll have to prioritize and learn in depth. Mm -hmm. For example, this year there are a lot of cases around Israel, Israel and uh, Palestine war. It is it was about the SBI thing that was happening about the uh, electoral bonds and things stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So what we have what I have done is I've gone on to the Mockad website the daily five uh, important news articles that were posted the last 20 days of the articles that were posted i've just gone through and just brushed upon all those things so i ended up getting a couple of questions from there where i was able to talk, tackle in much better way because i've gone into deep depth understanding because there was one question where the panelists asked about the interest rate of electoral bonds because that that is where it is not in any of the newspaper man so that is where i've thought that this is on a priority so i'll have to read that uh, thing in depth so that is where i've read about it and could give a confident answer about these things so that is how i would recommend that for the students this is a very good feature that is available on the market website which you should definitely take use of right. coming back to the interview preparation now uh, the work experience for all the working uh, aspirants who are writing their cat 2024 it is very much important to how you will drive your interview mm -hmm. i would like to share one of my anecdote here back going back to my preparation days uh, with the interaction that i was having with sanjana ma'am here I was I was able to put a couple of brownie points that I've got because I've mentioned two points from my work experience in my tell me about yourself. Mm -hmm. And that changed the whole course of direction of my interview. Mm -hmm. So I was much more confident because the questions that have been shooted upon were from my work experience and I could tell that with my much much more confidence. Mm -hmm. So I feel that uh, for all the working aspirant students, you should uh, understand that what you will have to mention and how you'll have to drive your interview. Okay. That is how you'll have to 
gain much more uh, marks compared to the other students. Absolutely. And that is the thing, right? A lot of us, we think in terms of clearing an interview, but that's a very good point you made that, you know, we really have to drive an interview, take it in the direction of our strengths or what we are comfortable or what is something which is different. So like you said, your work experience is something which is very different and will again be very interesting to the panelists. But again, for all of us, all of us might have some weakness, right? It could be a low CAT score. It could be, you know, some area which we don't know, like current affairs or maybe our marks are not great or whatever it is. But we'll always have some strength. So uh, whether it is in the tell me about yourself, hopefully, if you're asked or in any other question, if you can drive it in that direction, that is where obviously, you know, you're ensuring that, you know, you are really playing to your strength. So, yes, absolutely. So that's great to hear. And exactly. uh, I would I, like to also add hmm. upon here hmm. uh, because uh, I, I fairly remember uh, in our discussion that because tell me about yourself is an opportunity given by the panelists for us to put our important points in frame and how we are going to drive our interview. Absolutely. I think that was that is one way where you can tell about yourself mm -hmm. and what where you want to drive your interview mm -hmm. from. For example, in my case, uh, initially with my tell me about yourself in the initial mock interviews that I've given, I was just mentioning about my academics. Mm -hmm. But that is when we have after a couple of mock interviews, we have uh, Sanjana Ma'am and also the I am alumni that have uh, mm -hmm. I've been speaking to. They have mentioned that my work experience is very different from the other students. Okay. That is my strength, and you'll have to project that. So you will have to understand for all the uh, viewers who are watching this video please understand your strength be it your academics you might be a gold medalist in your uh, graduation or you might be working in a very niche sector which might be of interest so whatever it is if th that is something that you want to mention about please take that as an opportunity understand what your strengths are and put forth because uh, that is more important how you can get the extra points we need absolutely in fact we've had uh, i don't think we've discussed this but we've had students who've, who've been at you know a state level or a national level in sports and uh, uh, they've tried to drive the interview there because again that is something which somebody will want to know you might think that you know how is sports even related to an MBA but the you know the skills that you learn discipline team spirit leadership competitiveness all of that of course you're going to you know end up needing during your MBA so yes you're absolutely right so whatever are our strengths or you know whichever way we are comfortable and you know that is where we should definitely try to drive the interview and again another thing is I mean since we've been speaking so much about being a gold medalist or current where some of you now might be worried that oh my god how do I tackle an interview I'm not reading the news at all so also remember that you know the interviewers are going to be kind you've been shortlisted and you know part of your hard work at least like 60 70 percent of your hard work is done with the CAT exam uh, and now they're sort of looking to try to select you so give them reasons to select you talk about your strengths but if there are one or two questions which you're not able to answer again just be honest and tell them that sorry this is something which I don't know and you know that that's perfectly fine you know it's not that you have to get a full 10 out of 10 you make a few mistakes but that will still fine if you know they feel that yes you are some somebody who is keen, who's going to be hardworking, who's going to be driven. And that's all that we need to sort of showcase. So great. Yeah. So uh, let's make it a little bit more interesting. So what I'll do now is, you know, we'll do a little bit of a rapid fire, which we're doing with all of the students. So uh, sure. your answer can be as short or as long, but you can't really think before answering. So that's how it is. Okay. 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 So uh, why did you decide to do an MBA? Uh, long term vision of being an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what role do you want to take up or what area do you want to specialize in? Consulting. Okay. Uh, who have you interacted more with, Vignesh or Sanjana? Uh, Sanjana. What was uh, more stressful, the CAT exam or the interview experience? The interview experience. Okay. Uh, online versus offline? I would prefer any day online, especially because I have given my condition, I've been working. So for online, for online, you have the flexibility of going back and revisiting the recorded sessions. Mm -hmm. You can go back and listen to the recorded videos and you can, because for every student, you have different pace of learning. I might be a fast learner or I might be a very slow paced learner. So I can always go back, listen to the class at my own pace. And if if I have any doubts, I can always go back to the faculty or to the mentor and ask those questions. I feel that online is a great uh, thing given that the technology that we have, we can, I can always. And also I would like to mention that one point about mock CAT, the differentiating factor that I had is the accessibility to both Sanjana and Mama and Vigne, sir. Because for me, I was a working uh, professional. I was very much tied up with my work things. So even if I have, what I've done is I've noted down all the doubts or the queries that I had and ended up posting them on the Telegram or WhatsApp at the end of the week. Mm -hmm. So that is how the online has helped me understand and get better with the preparation. Mode. Okay, okay, that's great. And uh, some advice for fellow UPSC aspirants who are maybe looking to switch? I would uh, like to mention that UPSC is not the end of the life 
because we give our heart and soul in the preparation i know it how i'm on how uh, how it how it will take a lot of toll on your mental health as well as your physical health given that the amount of time it requires from us but after upsc if it is not our thing please understand there are different ways in life and uh, if you are uh, feeling that you you can do better in the corporate world or if you can get into consulting finance or any sector ma is a good option uh, uh, please come come here even if with the kind of hard work that you have put on it for upsc you can easily crack uh, get a good percentile in the cat and end up getting in a top east mm-hmm. and continuing your whatever field you would like to go in so, so now vignesh typically uh, we think of it this way that you know oh if you're an engineer you know you end up being good at quant now you weren't bad at quant but then you know vrc was your strength so how did you prepare for quant you know what were the thoughts that you had when you started cat prep and how did it go uh initially i felt uh quant is a uh, quant is one section that i can very much pull it off because being an engineer we feel that we have done much of mathematics in our person plus 2 so we end up doing much in quant so but uh, it hit me very badly after giving my first mock itself i have understood that this quant is quite different where we have different concepts in one question and we'll have to prepare accordingly and what i have thought my it is a misnomer that if you prepare the formulas and equations you end up doing good in cat examinations it is not it has to be conceptualized you will have to revisit go back listen to all the uh, videos or for that matter go to all the uh, different problems that uh, we have in different sections of quant because that is very much important for you to understand the concept because somewhere in from june if you have started a preparation and completed in geometry so again if we end up solving the same problem in november in the cat examination it is the concept that helps us to solve that problem that is so it is very much important to understand that for quant preparation you will have to be thorough with the basics you have to understand all the concepts and go for it rather than just uh, go rushing through the formulas and the equations right no that that's a great point actually uh, because like you said a lot of people end up thinking this that hey i've done maths in school but you know school maths is something which is very different here there are no step marks and things like that but i think another thing is this is also a little bit more true of cat as opposed to other exams like zat or snap where you know i mean because they have the calculator they've sort of stepped away from these calculation heavy questions whether it is in quant or even in dilr right so quant is very con- conceptual i mean i think it was very conceptual even when i took it back in 2006 but now of course you know since 2015 when the calci was brought in uh, it's become pretty uh, concept driven and dilr has become more lr centric whereas you know there are still other exams where you'll have you know more of di problems and me personally you know looking at the varc side i also find that you know what they've done on the varc front where we don't have vocabulary or grammar that i think is also something which makes sense because in this day and age you know even if you don't know uh, you know a spelling or you know you're making some mistake in grammar you have a lot of tech which will help you and you know the important part is are you understanding something like an rc or you know something like you know you might have an article or a report or something like that maybe even a news article at work so are you understanding that are you able to analyze and you know get the crux and then use that to make whatever decision it is for your company so i think that is what they test really well so i think yeah that's a great point that you know not formulae you have to be more concept driven and you have to solve a lot of questions and like you said a lot of the questions will combine two or three concepts from two or three areas uh, so again a lot of practice is something which helps us to get the hang of things so good stuff yeah i think i would recommend a little bit of upsc prep to all mba aspirants because i think the work ethic that you've got from there has really helped you to sort of like ace the entire process definitely so great yeah vignesh thank you so much for your time and i'm sure you'll inspire not just upsc aspirants who want to switch but essentially anybody who's uh, you know wanting to take up cad but you know you don't have as much time as you would want to devote and i mean you're obviously someone who's prioritized the right way and of course put in a fair amount of work but you know been able to prioritize and and boost you know your strong sections and also make up you know considerably your you know weaker sections and of course crack the interview so thanks for coming out today and uh, any last piece of advice uh thank you ma'am it was pleasure talking to you and interacting with all the viewers here sharing my experience of cat 2023 and how i ended up getting a good b school so i would for all the aspirants who are writing their cat 2024 i say that it is a right time it is a high time that you will have to start your preparation and you will have to change your gears because it's just 6 months from here you will have to write your cat don't lose your hope it it would be very tiring it would be very stressful because you will have to give your mocks you end up not getting good scores keep up the good work because the results would come eventually at the end when you write your final examinations so don't lose your hope give your best take feedbacks regularly if you are a student of mock it take feedbacks regularly if not go back revisit your strategies if it doesn't working please change your strategy so that is what i would tell to all the aspirants who are writing cat 2024 so finally all the best for cat 2024 all the best for cat 2024